run game. Silver lining for Vanderbilt, and I talked to A.J. Swan about this during the week, is they knew what they were up against in the number two team in the country. And Swan going back shoulder here, another fantastic grab by Will Shepard. And it's an opportunity for him as a young quarterback, if, if he is the future of this program, to use this game as a as a foundation and say, you know, when I was a freshman, we went to Tuscaloosa and I played against Will Anderson and that great defensive line. And that, and, and I learned so much in that game that helped me throughout the rest of my career. Yeah, it's not so much macro context as it is micro, right? Some of these throws, that throw right there to Will Shepard, that's a confidence booster. Another one here, back shoulder again to Will Shepard out there. That's three times they've connected downfield on talented Alabama corners. And those are things you can build off of. You start to be able to make plays like that, it sets up your run game. It gives you more zone coverage on the outside when you're winning in man like that. And Will Shepard had a couple big plays. But like you said, those are building blocks for confidence for a young quarterback in A.J. Swan. Swan, 10 of 16 tonight. And see, it gets Alabama into a two-safety look here now. And they'll try to run it straight ahead and find less than a yard. That's Ray Davis, senior from San Francisco. What a story Ray Davis is. His parents were in and out of incarceration. He ended up in a foster home at age eight. His godmother took two siblings, but not him. And he said, being homeless as a young kid, it made me look at the bigger picture. Like, there's always people going through worse things than me. It's like an incredibly mature outlook for a guy going through it at such a young age. The option pitch, and that one's blown up initially, but McGowan gets through, lost his mouthpiece, but... Byron Young turned him around. Well, somebody lost a mouthpiece. That'll bring up third and about ten. And here's that cheetah package that Cole mentioned a few times. Now on the field, Braswell, Anderson, Turner, three defensive ends, three long guys that can get after the quarterback all in at the same time. We'll see how Mandy goes about protecting this right now. No tight ends. It's 5-0 lineman and Ray Davis in the backfield. Anderson now working on the right side of the line. Jacob Brammer. Had to come inside. That is a dart, and it's just off the hands of Ben Bresnahan. All right, so you mentioned the cheetah package, Jordan, but the brilliance in it is locking up the center with the nose guard, so he can't come out and help. So now you put your left guard and your left tackle both on islands against two elite speed rushers. But your left tackle has a defender lined up on his outside shoulder with another defender outside of him. You think about the kind of width that a tackle is going to have to gain on that set. And just to gain that width means you're giving up leverage with speed. Very difficult task. The left guard had a defensive end on him. Yeah, that's what makes it hard, right? He's not he used to that kind of speed. over the tackle, by exactly. the way. Exactly. Checks up at the 13-yard line. 32-yard punt for Hayball. Right, Sean will have the ball in his hands when we bring you back to T-Town. As a girl, it becomes unstoppable. Arguably the only area of imperfection. Here's Latu. And he picks up 10. There is a Bama Yankees comp to be made to. The pressure to win at a place like Alabama the football. Talked to Nick Saban about it yesterday. That comp made. And I was talking with Aaron Boone a couple weeks ago. Right after I left Tuscaloosa. And he immediately interjected. He said, well, did you tell him I'm a Yankee fan? But the... The pressure that Aaron Boone faces, and he says all the time, the pinstripes are heavy, right? This is It's hard to win here because of the outside pressure. Nick Saban said, I don't care about outside pressure. There is no outside pressure, Cole, because he's such a competitor. The pressure to win is inside the building, and it comes from the head coach. I think he puts the highest expectations on himself, and he talks about the standard, playing to that standard each and every week. That's his expectation. Play as the best football team in college football each and every week. And when they don't meet that, he knows it. And his players will know it. He'll tell his players about it. He'll tell his coaches that they didn't coach that way. So I loved it because I, I thought he got, got agitated when you, when you brought it up, basically saying, I don't, I don't need anybody else to tell me to be good. We, we know what we want to be, and we'll handle it ourselves. He was relaxed later in our meeting when he eventually pushed his chair back and put his loafers up on the table. I hadn't seen that side before. Leave it to Tom Hart to fire him up. <laughs> None was better than the personal awards question we got two years ago. Well, let me tell you, Cole came to Tuscaloosa this weekend, and he made history. They pressure Bryce Young. He gets it away. There's a first down. He finds Kobe Prentice. Boy, Anthony Orgy came clean on a pressure right here, but Bryce Young so good at subtle movements in the pocket. He sees it, sidesteps, and somehow with, with no platform or feet underneath him, able to deliver the ball to Prentice. 32 of 41 plays through the air. They'll add another one, perhaps. Young, little half roll, and it's complete for another first down. 
Thursday night, we got to town, and uh, according to the Learfield folks, Cole Kublik became the first ever Auburn grad to be a co-host of Hey Coach. You wouldn't know he was an Auburn grad the way all the Alabama fans wanted to take a picture with royalty after the show. I really, they just wanted to ask me what it was like doing radio with McElroy every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure on Bryce Young. He escapes. Evades the sack and picks up five. I will say it was a really cool experience, and, and I'm very appreciative of Coach Saban and everybody involved. Josh Maxson involved with the athletic department who allowed me to do it, but I wasn't an Auburn guy when I was up there. I was a football nerd, and I wanted to learn from Nick Saban, and hopefully the crowd got a little bit of that as well. And we got some more in our meeting, as you stated, Tom. Just a, a, a pretty cool weekend to be around the head coach as much as we were. On second and four. It was the easiest job Chris Stewart ever had. He didn't even have to talk. Wide open again, finding soft spots in that bandy zone. It's Prentice again. Freshman from Calera, Alabama. Boy, about three straight plays where Bryce Young was under a lot of pressure this time. Watch the pocket here. And watch the stripe on his helmet. Watch the reed just going one, two, three, four. Gets all the way back to Prentice. You give Bryce Young that kind of time. The stripe in line with his vision? Yep. Roydell Williams' first touch tonight. We used to always watch film as quarterbacks. And our coach would say, watch that stripe in the back of your helmet. Right? i got to see you working through your progressions. The best, or even more so important, looking safeties off. Look to the left. Get that strike going all the way to the left. That'll move defenders. Bryce Young does that so well, and it's an easy way to see it. What do the Bengals do? That's yeah, tough, man. Honestly, I've, I've heard of teams that don't have it, putting it on their practice helmets for that specific reason. Well, a few mistakes made by Alabama tonight on the offensive line. Dalcourt flagged for the second time tonight. Back to Saban real quick. I think it's so interesting. You get around a coach like that, and a lot of times I think some media members maybe toe tip or like, like dance around some questions. Man, the, the guy wants tip to talk. Tip toe is the yeah, word. That's the word. Yeah, for. I was going for it. Uh, the guy wants to talk ball. Yeah, right? yeah. You ask him intelligent questions about football, you're going to get intelligent, really good answers. And I think Cole does, did that better than anybody there right before halftime. He'll go with Williams again. And Roy Dell Williams is making the most of his second half opportunity. Rips off 13. Bill O'Brien told us five is the one that brings the downhill power. If we need that thunder, he's the one that we're going to turn to. We've seen it here on consecutive carries in this drive. And Kendall Randolph in the game as well as a tight end, but really an extra offensive lineman. Here he is again, and needed two for the first down. Maybe just short. Roydell Williams, Jr. from Hueytown. You know, Jordan, I want to speak to that advantage of Kendall Randolph being the lineup as a yeah. tight end. Coach Saban said you know, he might be a better tackle than guard. It's, it's not a negative. But what he does well is block guys in space. And I can tell you, a lot of guys who move to tight end, you fail consistently because of how much quicker the defensive players are that you're going against on a regular basis. So the fact that he can kick out two spots, guard, tackle, tight end, and be able to handle it, says a lot about his athleticism. High formation for Robbie Oots. And now he'll get to the wing. Boy, uh, Jason McClellan now in the backfield. Need one for the first down. And ran into his own guy. And Vanderbilt able to stop him. for Vanderbilt came screaming in there a lot of times you get heavy like that it kind of ends up being mush ball everybody in there shoved together and Patterson was able to dip around get outside of it and make a great play for a big stop on third down mush ball is that right no Tip -toe, mush ball toe tip around mush ball wash pit wide ball, ball. Wide ball. that's what I was going for Jeez, unbelievable that guy just gave you a failing grade Riker done for the 21 yarder and the chip shot is good. 84-yard drive. Alabama picks right up where they left off. Guard to Debbie Crawford, principal at Holt Elementary, used towards school resources and supplies. Let's we'll see what Debbie Crawford thinks of Vanderbilt's special teams. They're going to have it stuck at the one. There's Debbie. Principal at Holt Elementary. That was a school picked by Terry Saban. They have a foundation that promotes and supports children, family, teacher, and student causes. Hey, the techs are rolling in. Debbie, you're on TV. Congratulations and thank you for your work. Bandy backed up. They can get it out of the end zone by Ray Davis. As for the fair catch, but then muffed it, so the ball was dead when he recovered it. And that's why Vandy stuck at the one. And Vandy haven't been able to run the football very effectively. 
You want to let that one just bounce, <laughs> go through the end zone, but this is dangerous territory here. Let's see if they dare run a pass backed up this far. They do. Slot play action. Trying to go back shoulder, and that'll draw a flag. And, well, that's not how Nick Saban teaches it, Cole, but we did learn how he teaches his DBs to defend a back shoulder. The main key. Pass interference on the defense number seven. 15 yard penalty from the previous slot, and that carries an automatic first down. So the main key is going to be that receiver. When you're trying to cover him, he's heading downfield. That back shoulder comes here. This shoulder is going to be the key visually for that wide receiver. Because obviously when it turns, the receiver's got to turn to come up and try to catch the football. So Coach Saban told us that outside shoulder is going to be the key on the back shoulder play. But that was one interesting because Coach Saban talked to us about that one too, saying sometimes when they throw that ball to drag the receiver back inside and my guy's playing the football, he's in phase, doesn't always feel like it's automatically be passing interference. Yeah. They'll run it here. And his point being that... If the receiver turns and the DB turn in the same direction, they're going to meet each other. That's good defense, even though by rule book, they're going to throw a flag. Yeah. Saban coaches what? DBs. Defense DBs. Yeah, yeah I'm a quarterback. I'm going to say no thanks. That's a, that's a flag every time. <laughs> that flag was on Eli Ricks, a guy that transferred into this program from LSU. A lot regarded him as a potential first-rounder, top-ten pick. I mean, potentially. Yeah, no, right? no doubt. But a guy that really... Hasn't been able to get on the field here at Alabama. Saw Pete Golding go say a few things to him right before this drive, knowing that he was going to get an opportunity here. No question about the skill level and the talent. Level. And that one batted away by Kool-Aid McKinstry. And, and what we've learned is that Alabama values defensive backs who are in the right spot, who can make plays even if you don't have the best 40 time, you don't have the best physical tools. Not, not to sell anybody short. Totally. But... It's a difficult scheme, right? Man match means a cornerback has got to adjust to routes, to formations, to which guy releases inside, outside. Your responsibility can change within half a second depending on how receivers release. So not easy just to plug and play in the system coming from LSU where a lot of man coverage. Yeah, a little easier over there to understand what you need to do and when you need to do it. Bring four. Almost got to a block in the back, and this ball is launched downfield incomplete. Hansen was trying to slow down Braswell and get flagged for the hold. And we got another flag down to the secondary. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, face mask on the offense, huh. number 55. Holding on the defense. Those penalties will offset. We will replay third down. It's going to be left tackle Gunnar Hansen. The hold was on number two of the defense. Byron Young being helped off. Still, again, the pressure there on A.J. Swan. One on one. On the outside, you got Braswell rushing against Gunnar Hansen in a one on one situation. I'm just really surprised you see here on the left side of your screen. Just gets his hands up in the face of Braswell. I'm just really surprised at how often these tackles are being asked to go one-on-one -on -one against. Especially against that width, Jordan. Yes. I mean, he was a man removed again. That That's is just tough. such a difficult task. Or could have been a missed assignment by Ray Davis, who yeah, was headed that direction and leaked out without making contact. Right. Anderson will move inside to Oto out. They're down nine. Three sacks tonight by Alabama. And incomplete. Have a body junior met by Malachi Moore right as the ball arrives. Yeah, Alabama bringing another extra guy, Henry Toto, rushing there off the edge, which Malachi Moore knows they got to get the ball out quick. A really good job of as soon as he sees that break, right? We talked about the breaking, breaking points. points. Yep. How, what depth do they break their slant at? As soon as he saw that, got his eyes on the quarterback, broke that up, almost got an interception. Hey, ball punches this one downfield. And it'll go out of bounds. We'll see where they'll mark it. 5 10 remaining third quarter at Brian Denny Stadium. Bam up 31. Booth for the Crimson Tide this season due to an illness. Hate to not hear Eli Gold on the radio calling these football games because I know so many people understand how important he's been to everything Alabama has done and what you do on your way home in two games, riding around listening. They've only had five play by play voices for Alabama radio since 1958. Chris Stewart is the fifth this year, taking over for Eli. Chris does an amazing job. We love Chris Stewart, but Eli, we miss you. We're thinking about you, and we hope to hear you back here soon, healthy one day. Yeah, and Chris has pointed out he is just keeping the seat warm for Eli's return. Working alongside John Parker Wilson with their engineer Tom Stipe. That one complete. That's Cameron Latu. And I thought Chris, the first game of the season, the first touchdown of the year, 
Called the touchdown, and everybody was curious what he was going to say. Was he going to use Eli's phrase, touchdown, Alabama? And Chris simply said, this one's for you, Eli. So, looking forward to Eli's return to the broadcast booth. Here's Jameer Gibbs. And Gibbs takes it for a first down. By the way, we're talking about Clark Lee starting his college playing career as a baseball player at Birmingham Southern. They won the College World Series for their level. Their radio voice that year, the postseason, was Chris Stewart. He called the games in Lewiston, Idaho for their postseason run. 22nd first down of the night for Bama. End zone. Open. Incomplete. What an effort by Ja'Cory Brooks. He already has two touchdown catches tonight. Next time we'll tell you about Chris Stewart's time as a sports reporter at the Over the Mountain <laughs> Journal. <laughs> well, it is 34-3, so we have time. Premature celebration from that Alabama fan. Already had the hands up. That's another example of Bryce getting to his fourth read on the backside. It's a post on the backside that when you draw that play up, you're like, no, we're never going to get there. Huh. Maybe we will. Maybe you do. Chase McClellan. Uh -oh. You dropped an uh-oh. Yeah. When running backs go same foot, same shoulder, you're going to see the left foot hit and the left shoulder, bam. Get out of the way. See the value of Cam Latu there with that tight end insert, kind of out of a fullback position. When you knock a guy's mouthpiece to the ground, you've made solid contact. Not too attached here. And McClellan finds another hole. And he throws him to the ground. Touchdown from 12 yards out for Jason McClellan. Second touchdown of the season for McClellan. His season was cut short last year. And he was an absolute wrecking ball on that drive. Well, as much as Bill O'Brien loves to see some of the big plays through the air that Bryce Young has had tonight, it's a sight for sore eyes to see physicality like this. You're an offensive coordinator. The run game opens everything up downfield, and Alabama has been physical up front. Came into this game leading the country in yards per attempt, and that is a grown man stiff arm. Reminiscent of a Najee Harris, who yep. does that at the NFL level now, making grown men look like little children playing football. That was a get-off-me shove. 515 yards of offense for Bill O'Brien's unit tonight. Fair catch taken and handled cleanly. Let's get it to Laura Rutledge, our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Wherever fun happens. Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. Two fifty six remaining in the third. Well, we talked about Eli Ricks earlier. I've been watching him on the sideline and T Rob has been going over to him, talking to him almost before every possession. Pete Golding going and talking to him before possessions. It's a guy they want to catch up as quick as possible. He's a talented player. The more depth you can have at that position. I'm not saying Kool-Aid McKinstry, he's been playing at a high level. Terry on Arnold, Kyrie Jackson are playing at high levels as well. So that cornerback group is coming together, but anytime you have a talent like Eli Ricks that can provide depth, and if something happens, be a lockdown guy out there. This coaching staff would love to have him come up to speed as quickly as possible. Another back shoulder off the hands of Shepard. DB's coached by Travaris Robinson. He's working on Kool-Aid McKinstry right there, a guy that Travaris Robinson told me before the game reminds me the most of myself. Doesn't have the best straight line speed. Not as good of an athlete as some of the others. Terry on Arnold's the guy they say is the most gifted. Kyrie Jackson, one of the guys that's the fastest, maybe most athletic. You get quotes like, doesn't know what he doesn't know about Terry on Arnold. And obviously, some of the other DBs, Brian Brand's going to be described as the best DB. But Kool-Aid, he said, reminds me the most of myself. The first thing he said after that is, well, he's smart. And so, of course, you try to go, he reminds me of yourself because he's smart. But 
It is interesting that maybe one of the guys that's not the fastest, most athletic is described as that because T. Rob was one of the best football players I ever played with at Auburn. Wasn't the tallest, wasn't the fastest, wasn't the strongest. But the guy just knew the game and knew how to play it well. They sack him again, converging on Swan, Will Anderson Jr., and Chris Braswell. Fourth sack of the night. They got that cheetah package again. Braswell's going to come from the inside here. Will Anderson from that side as well. That's just so tough for a tackle on Braswell's side. I know Will Anderson got there too, but Braswell has, or that tackle has, Braswell and Dallas Turner out there. Yeah, outside of him. You got two guys, and you're like, I don't know which one's coming, but both these guys are <laughs> really good. Well, we were talking with Tyler Steen yesterday, the former Vandy tackle, now at Alabama. He's got to go against Will Anderson every day in practice. Line drive kitch, uh, kick, here's McKinstry. It's a first block. And he gets forced out of bounds. And he said, what makes trying to block Will Anderson so tough is he's got a variety of moves. He's not just a bull rusher or not just a speed guy. And so you're left to guess many times. And, Cole, that's a tough spot for a tackle to be in. Will Anderson, two and a half sacks tonight. We'll catch Derek Thomas. But there are only two names on that list now. And the most difficult part about it, I mean, you just, you just think kind of common sense. To handle his power, you have to anchor. So, obviously, you're not going to be able to take a very quick pass set. So, if you want to jump him and set laterally, you got to get out there quick because you got to cut him off. If you want to get deep and gain depth and try to cut off that arc to the quarterback, where well, you're technically going backwards. So, a guy with his strength could easily turn that speed into power and be able to run you over. When are you going to anchor? Either way, if you want to jump him, if you want to set him deep, you have to find a way to get your cleats in the ground because, like Jordan said, he has a variety of moves. New quarterback in for Alabama. This is Jalen Milrow. And he'll hand off to Jace McClellan. By the way, moments ago, the training staff for, for Alabama took Byron Young back into their locker room on a cart. So Milrow, 8 of 12 on the season. Was 0 for 2 against Monroe last week. Led him four games last year. Was the number four dual threat quarterback in the country. And has to fall on this one. Well, it's Hopkins High School in Katy, Texas. Snap wide left there. I'll tell you what, Milrow, he's like a free safety or a strong safety playing quarterback. I see Byron Young there going back to the locker room. But I say that not to say that he can't throw the football because he is so gifted. Mm -hmm. He has a huge arm. The accuracy, the consistency coming along as he develops. Such a weapon back there. On third and 16. Milrow. Throws it away. Just really good coverage on the back end there by Vandy. Third and forever situation, so they sat back in zone coverage. Some good coaching coming from the GOAT right now. James Burnett to punt it away. Second punt of the night for Alabama. Shepard looking for a return. And gets dragged down by the ankle after a 46-yard punt. Seven on the return. So that'll bring it in to the third quarter. Alabama going to win its 23rd consecutive game against Vanderbilt. Tied 41. Doors three.